Good morning, Ecclesia kids. I'm Rebecca, this is Avery and Christy. In our story today, we're gonna to learn about a time that Jesus did something very unexpected to help someone in need. We have loved seeing the videos and photos of you singing the memory verse song, learning the New Testament books, and pictures of your craft. Don't forget to have your parents keep sending those to kids at ecclesiaeugene.org. Now let's see what you learned last week. John 3, 16. For God's love the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall never ever perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. He himself bore us in, in his body on the tree that we, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. To First Peter two twenty. Himself for our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to live to righteousness. First, by his wounds you have been healed. First Peter two twenty four. Sleep? Oh, thanks for waking me up. I think I need another cup of coffee. Well, anyways, Teacher Nick here. I'm so excited to sing some songs with you. So today we're gonna sing two songs up front. We'll take a little break and then we'll sing two more songs and well then we'll be all done and we'll get to do it again next week. Okay, for this first song, and for this first song, I hope you're ready. We are gonna sing this little light of mine. But you need to get your hands up because, well, if you don't have the hand motions up, then you might fall asleep too, and we wouldn't want that to happen. So get them up, 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 up. <gasps> Whoa, that was cool. Okay, get them up and get ready to sing. Say, I'm so ready. What was that? Say, I'm so ready. <laughs> okay, good job, good job, good job. Get him up, 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 up. Let's do it. <gasps> oh, I don't need this. Boink. Hey, do you remember what that was called? Last week I taught you what that was called. Do you remember? It was called a capo. Very good. And if you don't, didn't remember, that's okay. I taught you again this week. Let's do it. <gasps> this little light of mine. Are you sleeping over there? I can't hear you singing. Do it a little bit louder. This little light of... Good, and get them up, get them up, get them up, 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 up. And if your parents are standing right there, say, Mom, Dad, put your little lights up too. All right, good, 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 good. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <gasps> Hide it under a bushel. No! Good, 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 good. All right, let's do it. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <gasps> Don't let Satan eat it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan eat it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan eat it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <laughs> Great job! Okay, we're gonna sing one more song, and well, then we'll be all done, and we'll sing two more songs in a little bit. So grab a seat, 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 and if you're not, or if you already are seating, sitting, seating, sitting, oh my goodness, Teacher Nick, wake up. Grab a seat, and we'll sing one more. 
and then we'll take a little break. So we are gonna sing Jesus Loves Me. So get ready to sing. You guys ready? Say, I'm so ready. <laughs> Good job, let's do it. In Jesus loves me, this I know. Come on, let me see him go. <laughs> Good job. All right, let's do it. In yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Awesome job. Okay, we're gonna take a little break and then, well, I'll be right back. Bye, everybody. Hi, boys and girls. This month's memory verse is 1 Peter 2.24. We're gonna say the verse, explain the verse, and sing the verse. So, the verse is, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. That we may die to sin and live to righteousness and by his wounds we have been healed. So, what does that mean? He himself bore our sins. Who was that? It's talking about Jesus. And what does it mean to what, bore our sins? Well, imagine I'm carrying something super heavy and it's too heavy for me. So then teacher Jill takes it from me and then she's carrying it for me. She's bearing it for me because it's too heavy for me. Just like our sins were too heavy. So Jesus bore them for us. Mm -hmm. And so the next part is, um, in his body on the tree. What's the tree? It's the cross. Jesus died on the cross. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, the next part says, what does it say? It says that we may die to sin. Oh yeah, we've got to die to sin and then we will live to righteousness. What's righteousness? Righteousness? Righteousness is doing the right thing with the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the last part of the verse is by his wounds, we have been healed. So, by his wounds, what wounds? The wounds from when he died on the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was healed or we were healed? We were healed on the outside and the inside. The inside, great. So, that is the verse, 1 Peter 2.24. Mm -hmm. So, I'm gonna sing it a couple times very slowly. Please pay attention to the hand motions and then we'll go faster and faster and faster. Get ready. He himself bore our sins is the first part. Right. <laughs> he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live, live to righteousness. And by his wounds we have been Okay, we're gonna keep singing it a few times. We're gonna go maybe just a little faster. Can you do those hand motions with Teacher Abby? Let's see. Fill your lungs with air. By his wounds we've been, whoopsie. Sometimes you might mess up the words. Should I be really mad and upset? Mm -mm. Oh, okay, let's try again. <laughs> By his wounds, no, he himself is how it starts. He himself for our sins. <laughs> Here we go. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live, live to righteousness. And by his wounds we have been healed. First Peter 224. Okay. I think we're getting the hang of it. A little faster. One more time. He himself is how it starts. <laughs> he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live, live to righteousness. And by his wounds we have been healed. First Peter. We did it! 
You did it. That's the verse, 1 Peter 2.24. Love you guys. Hi kids, I'm Aubrey and this is Caleb. So this is our last week to learn a memory verse for this month, which is 1 Peter 2.24, which says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. So Caleb and I are gonna play a little game with this verse. We have the verse printed out on these pieces of paper here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna mix these all up. We're gonna mix them all up. And we're gonna have to try to put them back in order. But you see, there's a twist. Caleb here is gonna have to be blindfolded while he tries to do this. So we're gonna get his blindfold on. Okay, Caleb, you ready? Mm -hmm. Can okay. I see it all? I, I don't know, can you? Wave your hands in front of my face. Oh, you I notice? <laughs> okay, you ready, Caleb? So, so ready. On the count of three, you're gonna try to mix the verse around and you're gonna try to put it back in order. All right. One, two, three, go. There's so many pieces of paper. Am I getting close? Not really, oh. not at all. Do you want some help? Yeah, I think okay. I might need some so help. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what to do. So if you take your left hand, put it straight down. The one that's like on the tip of your finger. Yes, that one right there. Not that one, the one next to it. Right there, you're gonna move that all the way to the top of the table. Keep it higher than that. Yeah, that works, right there. Find that one, put it at the bottom. You did it! You take your Whew. Whoa, I could not see anything right there. Well, similarly to me not being able to see you there, in our story today, we're going to learn about a man who was born blind. He wasn't able to see anything. He cried out to Jesus and Jesus then healed him. With this blindfold on, I couldn't see anything unless I had Aubrey's help. So thank you, Aubrey, for helping. Yeah, no problem. God gives each of us special talents and gifts, and he wants us to use these talents to help other people, just like I was helping Caleb when he couldn't see how to put the verse in order. So what talents has God given you, and how can you use those to help others? Hi everybody, Teacher Nick here. Okay, so today we are gonna learn in our story about a man who was born blind. Well, those of you who don't know what being blind is, it means that you can't see, your, your, your eyes don't work. And so just for a second, I want you and I to imagine maybe what it would be like to be born blind so that we can kind of understand what Jesus does in our story today. So just for a second, close both of your eyes or put your hands over your eyes and I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine that you need to walk outside and go grab your soccer ball or you need to get up and walk down the stairs or walk up the stairs and just for a moment try to imagine how hard that would be if you weren't able to see anything. And so today in our story we're going to learn about how Jesus healed a man who was born blind. So get ready for it. Jesus was walking with his disciples when he saw a man who had been born blind. The disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Did this happen because of his sin or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, Neither his sin nor his parents' sin caused this. This man was born blind so that people could see God's power through him. Jesus would be on earth for a short time, so he healed people to show what God is like. Jesus said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then Jesus spit on the ground and made mud. He put the mud on the eyes of the man who was blind. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus instructed. The man went and washed. Wow. When he came back, he could see. The man's neighbors were amazed. They took the man to the religious leaders and they asked him how he was healed. A man put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I can see, he said. The religious leaders were upset because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath again. They did not want to believe that Jesus could give sight to people who were blind. Over and over again, the man who was healed told the religious leaders what happened. 
the man believed Jesus must have come from God. But the religious leaders threw the man out of the synagogue. Jesus came to the man again and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me who he is so I can believe in him. You have already seen him, Jesus replied. The Son of Man is talking to you now. The man said, I believe, Lord. And he worshipped Jesus. Our sin makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He came to give us sight, true understanding of God and his kingdom. Those who trust in Jesus see who he is and worship him. Over a hundred years ago, there was a little girl named Amy Carmichael. She had big, beautiful brown eyes. But more than anything else in the world, when she was little, she wished that she had blue eyes. So every night before she went to bed, she would kneel by the bed and pray that God would turn her brown eyes into blue eyes. In the morning, she would wake up, run to the mirror, look in the mirror, and what do you think she'd see? Once again, her eyes were still brown and not blue. She thought that God hadn't answered her prayer. Little did she know that years later, God would call her to be a missionary in India. In India, there were girls in the temple who Amy Carmichael needed to help, but she needed to look like the girls in India in order to be able to get into the temple. So she would take coffee grounds and stain her skin a darker brown, and she would be able to go into the temple and help these girls. But if God had answered her prayer when she was a little girl, and had turned her eyes blue, she would have never been able to do that. She needed to have brown eyes to be able to go help those girls that God had called her to. Sometimes when sad, hard, or disappointing things happen to us, it's easy to feel like we're maybe in trouble to, with God or that we had done something wrong. Well, our story today in the Bible about the man who was born blind shows us that sad or difficult circumstances aren't always because someone did something wrong. There are ways that God can show his glory. Just like he showed his glory when he healed the blind man, and just like he made Amy Carmichael just the way he wanted her to be. Hi kids, how many of you like playing with Play-Doh? It's so fun to play with all the different colors and to put it into a lot of different shapes. So what would happen if I took this Play-Doh and put it in this dinosaur mold? That's right, it'll become the shape of the mold. I'll have a dinosaur. Now I can make a lot more shapes just like this one. All I would need to do is take some more Play-Doh and put it in the mold. But what would happen if I took the shape I already make, this dinosaur, and tried to put it in this mold of a pickle? It, it kind of ruins the dinosaur, doesn't it? it? It doesn't work very well. So let's pretend that we are the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the ones in our Bible story today. We think we have an idea of who God is because we studied the Bible and studied it and studied it and we want to please God in all things. The Pharisees wanted Jesus to fit in their little mold, just like I tried to fit this dinosaur and turn it into a pickle. They wanted him to do exactly what they thought he should do. The problem is that the Pharisees weren't in charge of this world. God is. So over and over again, Jesus tried to explain to the Pharisees who he was and who sent him. But that didn't really fit into the mold the Pharisees had for Jesus. They thought they knew more than him. So when Jesus healed a blind man on the Sabbath, that made him very mad. But the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, 8, that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. God's ways are so much higher than ours and so much higher than the ways of the Pharisees in our story today. God was the one who created the Sabbath day and he was pleased when Jesus healed the blind man on the Sabbath. So what can we learn from this story? Do you have your own idea of who God is? Be sure it matches what the Bible says. There will be times when bad things happen or when our prayer requests aren't answered like we want them to. But remember that God's ways and thoughts are so much higher than ours and we can trust him in everything. Hey guys, teacher Caleb here. In today's story, we learned about a blind man. This was someone who had never seen before. Can you guys do something with me really quickly? 
First of all, can you guys put up your hands? Let me see your hands. Awesome. Now take your hands and go and cover your eyes. Cover them real tight. No peeking. Can you see anything? No. This man had never seen anything either. It was dark. Everything was pitch black. That's what it had been like since he had been born. That was until Jesus healed him. When Jesus healed him, he was able to see for the first time in his life. Now, in the Bible, Jesus tells us that as followers of Jesus, we are the light of the world in Matthew 5, 14. Again, Jesus says in John 8, 12, that he is the light of the world and that those who follow him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But wait a second, how can we be the light of the world and Jesus be the light of the world at the same time? That's a good question. What we have down here is an example that I wanna be able to use to give you guys a little bit more an understanding about what I'm talking about right here. So as you can see, we have some battery packs over here. This is our power source. And on this side over here, we have a light. Now, how do we get power from the batteries over here to the light? Well, we have these connectors which have metal in them. The power goes through these connectors into the light. But if we don't have the connectors, the power can't go through to the light. Let me show you. So we have this on off switch right here. I'm gonna click it on and the power is gonna go through here all the way around and go straight to the light. However, if they aren't fully connected, the power is not gonna be able to go over to the light. Similarly, just as we can't get the power to go to light without the connectors, Jesus uses us as a way to be able to shine his light. Without Jesus, we wouldn't have the power to be able to go and share the good news of who he is. But because of Jesus, he chose us to be able to be that connector, to go out into the world and to shine his light. He uses us to connect and share his light to the world. We can do this in multiple different ways. It's very important for us to spend time in the Bible, praying to God and worshiping him and listening to what the Holy Spirit has to tell us in our lives. Without all of these things, we wouldn't be able to shine the light of God like he wants us to. Jesus is the source of our light. He shines light through our lives and makes us a light to the world. Some of the ways that you can be a light to the world are helping others, being kind even when someone isn't very kind to you, and praying for others and telling people about Jesus. We can do this in the small things in life, but it makes a big impact. Hi everyone, in today's story, we learned about one of Jesus' many miracles in which he restored a blind man's eyesight. But he did not only heal the man, he also healed him of his sin. In the beginning, God created the world and he saw that it was good. And he created us and saw that we were good. In the beginning, we were free from sin, which is why we were perfect and clear and good, just like this cup. But sin came into our lives through the enemy. And Adam and Eve disobeyed God. When they did that, their goodness became dark, just like sin. But luckily, we were sent a savior through Jesus who washed away all our sin by sacrificing himself on the cross. When we invite Jesus into our hearts, it washes away our sin. So as you can see, the water in this cup has become clear again because we've invited Jesus to wash away our sins. Just like Jesus healed the sins of the blind man, you can ask Jesus for forgiveness too. So take a moment and think about things you've done that you might not be proud of. Maybe talk back to your mom or dad, had a fight with your sibling, or lied or disobeyed. Know that Jesus can forgive and wash away all sins. And the best we can do is to keep following him and striving to be just like him. Hey kids, today in our story, we learned about when Jesus healed a man who was blind. With teacher Nick, you imagined what it would be like to be blind. One thing you wouldn't be able to do would to be read the stories that you have at home. You wouldn't be able to see the pictures or read the words in your Bible. So to help people that are blind learn to read, a boy named Louis Braille invented a system using raised dots on a page to represent the alphabet. Every letter can be felt with your fingers. So Louis Braille was also blind and he loved to learn. He wanted everyone that was blind to be able to read and learn. 
So Louis Braille, he was 15 when he invented the system that is known today as Braille. So for our craft today, we are going to write Light of the World in Braille. You will need to print our craft page from our website. You'll need some glue, some markers, and something like popcorn kernels, that's what I'm using, um, beads, or dried peas or lentils. If you don't have any of those things, you can just use the liquid glue, and when it dries, it will form raised dots on your page. So the first thing we wanna do is make a few dots with our glue. And if you have something that you want to attach it to, like my popcorn kernels, you just put them right on top of your dots. So this is what an L looks like in Braille. Now when you're all the way done, it will look something like this. We say that Jesus is the light of the world because he helps us to see the truth. He opens our eyes to the fact that we have sinned and we need to be forgiven. He has provided a way for us to be forgiven when we trust him and follow him. I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. weeks ago we started working on learning the books of the New Testament. A lot of you have sent in videos of you saying the New Testament. We're super proud of you and your hard work. We found out that a couple people tried to send in videos and they didn't quite make it to us. So maybe the files were a little too big or they got stuck in the outbox. If you send a video to us of you saying your memory verse or maybe the books of the New Testament or Old Testament and you don't hear back from us in a day or two, then just send us another email and ask if we got the video. We wanna make sure if you're learning the Old Testament or New Testament that we're able to send you your prize in the mail. Last week, we started learning the books of the Old Testament. Remember when Jill did the song with the books of the Old Testament? Now, if you're still working on the New Testament, that's fine, you can send us that video at any time. Now, in the Old Testament, there's more books than in the New Testament. There's 27 in the New Testament and 39 in the Old Testament. Some of those words are kind of hard to say, aren't they? They're really long or just words you haven't heard before. But they're just not random syllables that you're saying. Each one of those books means something. Just like in the New Testament, each of those books could be broken down into different categories. The same is true of the Old Testament. So. Let's learn that. We start out with Genesis. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now each of those five books are believed to be written by Moses. It starts with the very beginning of the world and it goes through talking about stories such as Noah and the Ark, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God giving his people the law. These five books are called the Pentateuch. Do you know what a pentagon is? A pentagon is a shape with five sides, just like the Pentateuch is five books. So that's the first five books. Next, we have the history books. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. There are 12 history books. These are the stories of God's people, the children of Israel. It talks about the judges of Israel, the kings, and several important people in the history of God's people. Now after that, we have five more books. These books are the poetry books. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. There's a lot of wisdom that you can learn in these books. All the rest of the books in the Old Testament are prophets. First, we have five major prophets and then a lot of minor prophets. Now prophets are people who sent warnings to God's people and also promises from God telling them what would happen if they obeyed God's laws or if they disobeyed God's laws. So the first five books are the major prophets. Now these aren't more important than the minor prophets, they're just a lot longer. Then we have the minor prophets. All of these things happened and were written over a thousand year time period. Now, Jesus was born in the New Testament, but the whole Bible is about Jesus. 
The Old Testament tells the story of God's people and why they needed a savior. All of the Old Testament points to the Messiah or Jesus coming. There's hundreds and hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament that tell us about Jesus and his coming to earth. And then in the New Testament, many of those promises are fulfilled and some are still yet to be fulfilled. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letters to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews and the Book of James, First and Second Peter, First and Second and Third John, to the Revelation. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy. Titus and Philomen, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, First and Second Third John, Jude and Revelation, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Acts and Blood to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and second Solomon, first and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, and the book James, and second Peter, first and second Peter, John, Jude, and Revelation. Hi everybody, I'm going to do the 27 books of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Letters to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews and the Book of Jude, First and Second Peter, First and Second and Third John, Jude and Revelation. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Letters to the Romans. First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews and the Book of James, First and Second Peter, First and Second and Third John, Jude and Revelation. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the Letter to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews and the Book of James, First and Second Peter, First and Second Third John, Jude and Revelation. <laughs> asleep again? <sighs> Silly teacher Nick. Well, hey, back at it again and two more songs to go. So for this next one, and I hope you're ready to sing it, it goes like this. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. 
And if for some reason, for some crazy reason, that I accidentally mess up the words, just say, that's not right. And then tell me what the right word is. So, well, I get it right because I'm not supposed to be up here singing the wrong words. That's not supposed to happen. But hey, everybody makes mistakes sometimes. And well, it's best that we learn from our mistakes. So if I sing the wrong words, which I think I just might, just say, that's not right. And then tell me what the right word is. All right. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Got it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I think I got it. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my hot dog. Oh no, down in my hot dog. That can't be right. Oh man, I mean Costco's uh, Costco hot dogs are good and I had that last night for dinner and well, it's not the love of Jesus down in my hot dog. Hmm, have you ever been to Costco before? And well, have you ever had one of their hot dogs? They are juicy and they are good. But that's not the right word. Love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Thanks. That's it. Ah, silly teacher, Nick. All right, let's retry. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart And I'm so happy, so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart Yes! We did it! Oh man, thanks so much for helping me learn the words And well, if you don't know the words to some of the songs that we sing on Sunday Remember, practice, practice, practice and eventually, you'll get it. Okay, I don't need my capo anymore. So, well, this can go by. Bye. Boop. See ya. And we're going to sing one more song. And then, well, we'll be all done. And we'll get to do this again next week. Okay, one more song. We're going to sing Nothing But The Blood. Correct. Let's do it. Oh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Awesome. Well, hey, it was so, 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 so fun singing songs about Jesus with you guys today. And I can't wait to do it next week. Well, bye, everybody. Here are some questions you can talk about with your family. One, why was the man born blind? Two, why does Jesus call himself the light of the world? And three, how does knowing Jesus help us think differently about suffering? Thanks for spending time with us this morning. Let's end our time together in prayer. Jesus, thank you that you are the light of the world. Thank you that you wash away our sins. Thank you that you are good. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you next week.